How does this thing work? Hello, I'm back. It's really lovely to see you. It feels like I've been away for months. I mean, I know it's only been since sort of the beginning of August since I last did a video, but I don't know, I think I've packed so much into August and we had a really lovely summer and I've managed to read a lot of books, um, most of them on Python, but a few others too. And I'll talk to you about those uh, later in the video. I've had a lot of ideas about the channel and plans and things that I want to take forward. I'm, I'm going to share that with you too. But before I get into all that, I just wanted to talk about September and how much I love September. I think it's to do with my love of stationery. Um, I don't know what it is about stationery. There's just something very settling and pleasing about it. When I was a kid, before I went back to school, I always managed to drag my mum to the shops and persuade her that I needed that new set of pens and pencils and felt tip pens and notebooks that I was never going to use, but there was something very pleasing about having them. Um, but September always makes you think about, you know, the new school year and what you might be able to learn in this academic year. And you're probably familiar with something on Twitter called the 100 Days of Code. It's a hashtag. It's in other places, too. And 100 days from now takes us to just about the end of the year. The, the end of the year is about 118 days away from today. And um, I just wanted to talk about goals and you know, you might have let your coding slip a bit over the summer, but I think now would be a really good time to set a goal to have achieved, you know, what you want to achieve with coding or certainly go a long way towards that by the end of the year. And, you know, don't be too um, hard on yourself, not too much pressure, but just try to set up in your mind the idea of reaching that goal and putting in place good sort of daily habits to get there. And of course, I'm going to help you on this channel as much as I possibly can. Um, I said that I'd had a few ideas with the channel, so let me talk about those first. Um, we've got a website coming, which is going to be, um, I'm really excited about that. That hopefully will be ready by the end of the year. Um, and what else? I've got a video course coming out as well. That's probably going to be on a different platform, but I will tell you all about that. Um, when that's ready too. I was approached by a training company and so we're going to be making videos on Python together. Um, so that's very exciting. And I've read loads of Python books over the summer. Reviews will be coming, but I just want to share my initial thoughts with you on those books. So let's do that now. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the books that I've been reading this summer. These aren't reviews um, because I haven't got time to go into all of those um, because I want to get through all the books that I've looked at, but the reviews will come in the future. They're books that I've uh, enjoyed, that I thought were really good, um, books that I've bought myself, and also books that were sent to me by the publishers. Um, but before I do that, there are two other books that I want to mention um, because I'm frequently asked which books I'd recommend for newcomers to Python, people that don't know programming or Python, um, and that's really quite an easy one to answer. They're books that I've mentioned before on the channel, um, but they are Python Crash Course, published by No Starch Press. As you will know, if you uh, are familiar with the No Starch books, it's their distinctive cover style. And Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, also um, by No Starch Press. Now, these books are similar and different at the same time. They're similar in that they have um, two parts to them. The first part is the syntax of the language and how to use um, the basics of the language. And then the second part are projects. Um, the projects are very different in the two books. Um, but it's a very good way of learning the basics and learning how to apply them. The other book that I've read this uh, summer was one that I bought from Manning, um, the Quick Python book. This is aimed at uh, people, it's, it's not a beginner's text, it's aimed at people that already know how to code that just don't code in Python. It gives a really nice overview of the Python language um, and how to use it. Uh, and um, I really enjoyed this book. So if you're not a beginner and you're switching or you want to learn Python and you're used to another language, then this would really be a good book to look at. One of the other topics that I want to cover on this channel in the future in more detail, we've touched on it in the past, are algorithms. And so I was looking for a nice introductory text uh, that I could recommend on algorithms. And I found this book published by Manning, um, written by Aditya Bhargava, called Grokking Algorithms. Um, and I think this could be the text that I was looking for. It's a nice, gentle introduction um, to algorithms, which can be quite a complex topic. So um, I really like that. This book was sent to me by No Starch Press, and um, I will be doing a full review on this book soon. Um, cracking Codes with Python. It's aimed at beginners, so it teaches you Python um, from, from scratch. Um, 
But what I like about it is that because it's cracking codes with Python um, and uh, you know it's, it's an introduction to building and breaking ciphers, it's a really good way to learn how to think algorithmically and how to think about taking something that's complex and breaking it down into simple steps. And that's a key skill that you will need to develop if you want to become good at Python. It's written by Al Swigert, who wrote Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. Um, and incidentally, one of the, um, you know, one of the, I, I think I mentioned in the past, uh, the CS50 uh, course by Harvard, which is available for free online. If you, if you don't know it, check it out. It's a really good um, introduction to computer science. In one of the problem sets there, they have ciphers um, that they want you to be able to build and then use to crack codes. And, and, it's, it's a, and I, then they use it because it's a really good way of um, getting better at problem solving and getting better at breaking down problems into smaller chunks that you can then code the answer to. So I really like that. It's a completely different um, book to the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. Um, it doesn't have sort of practical applications of Python, but it will teach you to think more algorithmically. And for that reason, I, I would definitely recommend and it. And then in a similar vein, but a little bit more complex, there's this book, which I bought from Manning uh, Publishers, Classic Computer Science, um, Problems in Python. And these are the sort of uh, algorithms and problems that you would be introduced to if you were doing a, um, a computer science degree. I'll be doing a full review on that book later, but I really enjoyed that book. And then finally, a book that was sent to me by No Starch um, is Bayesian Statistics the Fun Way. It's by Will Kurt. It's a really nice introduction to Bayesian Statistics. I haven't finished reading this book yet. I'm about three chapters in. Um, but it's a really uh, gentle and practical um, introduction to Bayesian statistics. Uh, and so I will be doing a full review of that in the future, but um, it's a book that I'm enjoying at the moment. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.